Hello again, everyone. This is Bob Barton, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDrydocs.com. I got another build to share with you. This is a common subject for a lot of people because of the availability of the plastic kit that it's based on. We're going to share with you a little German coastal submarine, the Type 23. What you are looking at right now, as I mentioned previously, is the plastic model kit put out by Bronco in 135th scale, which makes this a really nice size, both for display, but more importantly, for practical RC conversion. Now, the story of this boat, the hull was actually uh, sold to me by a friend up in Illinois in partially completed condition. He'd uh, kind of taken some unique paths to try and RC it and I actually ended up uh, selling that to a gentleman gosh maybe like a year and a half or two years ago that gentleman ended up moving hadn't done anything with the hull yet so I ended up with it back and then a different customer who had scheduled a build with me pivoted and zeroed in on this so I had the opportunity to finish the boat out and uh, if you check my weekly update videos you'll see a lot of the actual work that I did to get this thing in running condition. But what we're gonna do here now is run through the boat so you can see how it operates and then we're gonna throw some footage of this running around in our pool and having a good time. Access to the hull. Simple uh, Phillips head screwdriver and one stainless steel bolt uh, in the back here. So we're just gonna pop that out lift up and it comes off um, there's the snorkel tube and this just uh, is a friction fit so you just give it a little wiggle and your snorkel tube comes out and both of these periscopes by the way are fully removable um, now what we've got inside are a few things this is uh, an R and R model engineering uh, 70 millimeter ballast system uh, and then you've got some flotation foam in here so let's just go ahead and pull this out this velcro is what holds everything in place these are two flotation sections that just go right on top there very important not to forget to install those otherwise that thing will sink like a rock when you flood the ballast tank um, all of the connections are magnetic and these are the standard R&R &R magnetic connectors Got a little intermediate shaft in here that goes to a dog bone. So there's no physical connections that are actually made up. Uh, it's very easy to install and remove. Uh, same goes at the front. It's a magnetic connector installing the forward plane. So I'm just gonna pop that off with my finger, pop, pop that off with my finger, lift up at the front, and the whole cylinder just came right out. No tools necessary. Uh, beautifully engineered cylinder by R&R. &R. Let's run through this front to back so you can see how this works. Um, so like I said, to the front, we've got a bellows seal for our um, forward dive planes. We've got a remote key fob for uh, on and off, which means you don't need to open up the boat to activate or deactivate the power. Once you've bench tested the boat, everything is working to your satisfaction. You can button it up, bring it to the pond, and throw it right in the water. This is using a uh, 900 megahertz radio system put out by FreeSky, which I'm a big proponent of. You guys have all seen me run them. I'm a dealer for them. If you're interested, you'll find them on my website. Uh, automatic pitch controller is in here as well. Uh, on the bottom, we've got a lithium polymer battery pack. At this point, I do want to tell both you and the new owner, after every one run, it's imperative to open your cylinder. I get a lot of people saying, oh, I modified my cylinder with a charging port on the outside so I never have to open it. That is not a good idea. Not a good idea. Don't do it. After every run, you absolutely want to need to open up your cylinder. If you have just a few drops of water in there that have escaped your attention, it can cause corrosion issues inside your watertight cylinder. Don't do it. And then the other thing that you're going to need to do is uh, open it up and disconnect the battery because 
This remote switch, you can see there's a green light on there, is actually drawing a little tiny bit of current. Just it's listening for the transmitter. If you don't disconnect it, it will happily suck your battery dry over the course of a few days or a week. Ballast tank. Now, one thing I will make uh, a note of, this cylinder is probably minutely undersized to bring the boat up to full surfaced waterline. It's only a difference of about a quarter of an inch. If you're a stickler for that kind of detail, you might need to go with a longer ballast tank. This uh, rear section houses the two electronic speed controllers, one for the main drive motor and the other one for the ballast pump. And you've got your rear servos for rudder and dive planes, your main drive motor. There's another view of the big pump there. And you got your rear outputs, obviously, there as well. Now, the other thing I want to note is that this is not using Ron's standard ballast setup. It's all his components, but it's been reconfigured uh, for a, a little bit more simplicity and increased ballast volume. Because the ballast tank is just a little bit undersized, I wanted to make sure we're using every square or cubic millimeter that we can in that ballast tank. And so it's been modified and turned into a low pressure air ballast system. So it uh, pumps water in and out of the ballast chamber. The air escapes and enters through the hose. There's no snorkel in this. So the boat is ballasted positively. It will always have positive buoyancy. If you ever have a problem, take your hands off the controls and up it will come. So that is your uh, watertight cylinder, your watertight compartment. And then I'll just show you real quickly inside. They're not a lot to see, but you can see the uh, keel that's been lined with uh, lead shot and resin. And then the uh, ballast weights that we added for massively increased static stability. And you can also see all the drainage holes that we added to the boat as well. You want to make sure that your boat drains and fills uh, in a timely manner. Other than that, that's the boat. This is one of those RC submarines that I really enjoy owning and operating because it is a huge follower of the KISS principle. And everybody knows, keep it simple stupid makes things easiest for builders and operators. There's not a lot of things to go wrong. It moves, it dives, it looks awesome and it performs great. You cannot ask any more out of your remote controlled submarine. So these cylinders uh, work a little bit different than standard watertight cylinders in that, which is super cool, the entire equipment tray comes out of the tube rather than just uh, you know the ends with the ballast tank being part of this. I've gone ahead and turned this on and plugged in the power cable on the bottom. And you'll notice uh, I got some uh, paint marks on here. Got a little purple mark and a little purple mark. Those end up touching each other and we're going to do that in order to make sure that all of our alignment and everything is exactly where it needs to be. So we're just going to slip that in, line up our marks and push it down. Those are all lined up perfectly. Now we got the other side. And uh, we're going to grab our end cap. This is our little connection for our four dive planes. So we're just gonna grab that, make up of that connection. Look for the green mark on the bow. And then push that down, just like that. All set to go. All right, and I just wanna run through the controls of this boat. So this is the Free Sky X18. It's an absolutely beast of a radio. Basically nothing that you can't do with this, but it's set up in pretty well its most simple configuration here right now. Uh, what we've got here, uh, so to turn the boat on, obviously you turn the radio on here first, and then uh, you turn the boat on with the A button on the fob and turn it off with the B button. And uh, basically everything is powered on. Uh, you can check the functionality. So rudder is on channel one. You can see we can move this back and forth. We've got rudder control. 
We've got forward dive plane control um, on the same stick right here. You can see our forward dive planes moving. On the other side, we have our throttle. This is our throttle stick, obviously. Forward and reverse. Super smooth, works really good. And then uh, our ballast system is on this uh, three-way switch right here. So to dive, you put the switch down. And to surface, you put the switch up. And that's it. Super easy. That's basically all of the controls. Now, the only other thing that I want to talk about here is the fail safe system. So the way that this is set up is if the boat goes too deep and the receiver loses signal, the receiver keeps on board what you've programmed in the radio for it to do in the case of a loss of signal event. So you've got lots of options here. You actually, you can maintain uh, a visual uh, check of your signal strength right here and you can convert it from bars to decibels or whatever it is you want to do um, But what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna fake a uh, loss of signal event. So I'm just gonna put a little throttle in We're driving around Maybe we get too deep we've lost sight of it and I'm gonna fake a loss of signal So too deep and I'm gonna fake that by turning off the transmitter So notice what's going on. We've got full rise on the planes, throttle stopped, rudder centered, pumps turned on, and the forward dive planes are up. So in a perfect situation, what will end up happening is the, um, there we go, the, um, there we go, and it just got signal back and does what it wants to do. Um, the boat will just coast back up to uh, to the surface again with the throttle being shut off you know it'll just it'll just drift even if it's at an extreme downward angle uh, and then eventually float back to the surface that positive buoyancy is really important uh, it makes for a much more enjoyable and safe operation of your boat so let's talk a little bit about the performance of the submarine in our pool which you're gonna see right now the uh, Type 23, because of the configuration of the stern, has the control surfaces uh, very close to the propeller. The rudder, in fact, is directly behind it, which gives you amazing yaw control. All of the thrust is washing directly over that rudder. Modern submarines don't do that because they're concerned about noise. Back then, uh, they weren't as aware of that, so they put it back where it was most effective, and that's good for us because it means this boat has a very, very tight turning circle. So if you have a sizable swimming pool, this boat is a great choice, as you can see it running around in our pool right now. On the surface, great speed. Uh, it is uh, probably as this boat started out in the video, it was only maybe half throttle uh, running around on the surface, fast enough that the propeller was pulling air uh, into the propeller. Once you get it submerged though, you get a lot of really excellent control, both in uh, pitch and yaw. Very, very easy to drive, very docile to operate, a great beginner boat. One thing that you'll notice, and hopefully you can see it in this video, is the propensity of the boat to uh, yaw. So it'll, it'll roll, sorry, um, in a turn. So this all has to do with the hydrodynamic forces acting upon the sail or the conning tower of the boat. So in a turn, it'll want to bank into the turn, very much like an airplane would. So it looks super cool. You just have to watch for some boats that are a little bit of a speed demon. If you get going too fast, the boat will actually heel over to the point that your rudder now becomes a dive plane and you have to get a little creative on your control inputs. But all in all, this boat is so much fun I had a blast operating it. I always do. This is about the third or fourth Type 23 that I built. If you're looking for a starter boat, it's a good way to go. Grab the plastic model kit. I actually have one available on my website right now. Um, and then the r, r cylinder is a good choice. But of course, I am a big proponent of R250 series watertight cylinder, which is very, very nice choice for this submarine as well. Well, there you go, guys. That is your overview of this German Type 23 Coastal Submarine rendered in 135th scale based off of the Bronco 
model kit. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a comment down below. Shoot me an email, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. I'd love to hear from you. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like the content that you've seen here. It helps us out here at the Dry Docks a lot. And with that, we'll leave you with a couple of videos. One's gonna be up over here, and one's gonna be up over here. Uh, we'll probably put a 23 over here, and I don't know what I've decided to put on this side yet. It'll be a mystery to me. Uh, with that, I am going to let you go. As always, have a great day, and we'll catch you next time.